Take a look at Zach Levine this past summer working out with high-level trainer Jordan Lawley. There are a couple of interesting things about this, and the video is on YouTube if you want to check out the whole thing. First, I actually got to watch part of this workout because I had the opportunity of training with Lawley this past summer. I don't think it's that crazy, but if you don't believe me, here I am throwing a tough behind-the-back pass during a pickup game in J-Law's gym. I mean, this guy couldn't believe it. Peyton Pritchard and I were running some tough two-man action that day. Anyway, let's get back to the video. The main thing I want you to notice from Levine's workout is something that I think is missing from the way younger players work on getting better these days. Notice how in almost every rep, Levine is being guarded. Now these aren't fully live reps, meaning the defense isn't necessarily trying to get a stop on Levine, but by having defense, it makes him have to think through every play and make decisions. Instead of just doing the same exact rep as something 10 times in a row with no variation, having a dummy defender pushes you to be more creative. In fact, this past summer in an interview, Peyton Pritchard revealed that he pays overseas players to come stay with him in the offseason and play defense on him for a few hours a day. He said he likes to get 300 to 500 live reps in every single day, as well as getting his normal shooting and ball handling in. You know, maybe Pritchard will see this video and he'll fly me out to Boston this summer so I can play defense on him. But I do have the feeling he wants to go against guys that might be able to actually get a stop. However, let's be honest. We aren't all Zach Levine or Peyton Pritchard. We can't afford to have four guys rebounding, passing, and playing defense on us every time we want to get a workout in. A lot of you probably do most of your basketball training by yourself. And the worst thing that can happen is you're working incredibly hard at getting better at these skills, but you're not seeing any improvement in games. I think this is more common than you might think, so I first want to touch on on what individual workouts for younger players should actually consist of. Something that is a little counterintuitive that I've realized as I've gotten older and further in my basketball career is that the way you train should actually get simpler over time. In fact, in that same interview, Pritchard actually mentions this. Here he is commenting on having simplicity in your workouts as you get older. I'm not dissing trainers at all, but once you reach a certain level, the NBA, like, we what know what it is. Do. Like, I get my, <laughs> yeah. like, even I've heard Kobe talk about different things and he would take things from people but like for the most part he's getting his shots up he knows what shots he he wants to get better at mm -hmm. he's getting his ball handling in his passing in and then it's just the repetition of it he understands that as an nba player he needs to work on certain shots and moves that he is going to get and he can be effective with during his games. So his philosophy seems to be figure out what those skills are that I need to improve so I can play in these games and work on them consistently. But most of us obviously aren't in the NBA. A lot of you might have aspirations to play at the highest level, but you have a long way to go before you get there. So if as you get older, your workouts get simpler, does that mean as a younger player, your workouts should be more complex? Well, sort of. What I would say is that I think younger players should be developing a wide range of skills, specifically shooting, finishing, and ball handling in your individual workouts. And it doesn't matter if you're five foot tall, six foot, or seven foot. You should be working on these skills pretty much every day. This was my philosophy in high school, and I actually was lucky enough to find a trainer my freshman year of high school who understood this as well. My main area of growth in high school was definitely with my shot, where I went from being a non-shooter my freshman year to above average shooter my sophomore year, and that skill has continued to grow from there. And I was able to develop my shot by tweaking a few things in my form, and then just getting a ton of reps in. I remember when I was first making those changes in my form, I would get so frustrated in my workouts. In those days, it felt like I wasn't making anything. I mean, I would be airballing shots and cursing under my breath that, you know, I was never gonna get to the point I wanted and needed to get to with my shot. Recently though, while I was watching the Steph Curry documentary, I realized that he actually had the same issues when he first changed his shot in high school, which made me feel better about my struggles in retrospect. The key lesson here is, have patience. Like I said, I had a trainer in high school and I think if you have the opportunity to get with a high level trainer, that can be great. However, you do have to be careful as well. I remember I had a coach when I was really young and I wouldn't even say this person was a trainer, but he told me that I should never take underhand layups because I was gonna get blocked. And now I play professionally and I think about 80% of my layups I take underhanded. The moral of the story is don't just trust anybody. Make sure you're watching a lot of high level basketball and seeing what the best players are doing. I mean, if you watch Steph Curry for one game, you'll obviously realize that underhand layups are a big part of basketball. So go watch what the high level guys do and try and incorporate some of those things into your training. In essence, my philosophy is to work on a wide variety of skills as a younger player. And then as you get older and older, begin to key in on a few skills that you can become really great at. And then if you do make it to the college level, you can start to get even more specific and really key in on shots or situations that 
you find yourself in in your college game depending on whatever offense you might be running for instance at colgate our offense consisted of a lot of dribble handoffs but shooting off of handoffs was something that i hadn't really worked on in high school i had gotten my shot to a really good place though so now i just needed to add a little bit more focus into my workouts and start taking more shots off of dribble handoffs. Of course, college and NBA players can spend time working on getting better at their deficiencies. But I truly believe that if you spend the bulk of your time getting really great at a few skills, as opposed to just being kind of average or good at everything, you will probably be more successful as you get older. I probably took about five to 10 mid-range shots in my entire five-year career at Colgate. Sure, I could have spent a lot more time in the off-season trying to perfect my mid-range shot, but I decided to focus on other areas of my game that I could become really great at. Instead of focusing on something like the mid-range, which I was never really that comfortable with shooting to begin with. So now you're adding skills and getting better in your workouts. Maybe your floater is something that has gotten a lot better over the past few months. But how do you actually become efficient and comfortable with that shot in a game? Because there is a big difference between the two. And this is the tricky part. In a workout, of course it's easier to make the seventh shot on the wing in a row that's wide open than to make the one contested shot you might get over the course of an entire game. And this is why guys like Zach Levine and Payne Pritchard have guys playing defense on them in their workouts. The first thing I would urge younger players to do is try and play a lot of pickup in the offseason. And I know basketball these days, especially with AAU, can be year round and it feels like there is no offseason. But what's really good about playing pickup is that it gives you the ability to try things. In a pickup game, you can actually utilize a new skill that you've been training really hard in your workouts without fear of failure and a coach yelling at you. What is even better than pickup though is finding a few other friends or teammates and getting to the gym to play one on ones or two on twos. Again, maybe you aren't Pritchard who can actually pay people to play defense on him. But what you can do is grab some other players who want to get better, get to a gym, and really get after it in these situations. This isn't exactly going to help you learn the principles of team basketball, which are obviously mightily important. Hopefully you're learning some of those concepts in your team settings, although I'm sure that's a whole nother video. But playing one-on-one -on -one teaches you a couple of important things. First, it forces you to take tough shots, to bring out that bag that you've been working so hard on in your individual workouts and see if it translates with defense. Basketball is obviously played with defense, and if you can find a way to score on your defender, especially with no help from a ball screen, then you have a chance of being a really good player. Also, one-on-one -on -one is kind of cool because you get the added benefit of having to play defense yourself. We are too quick to forget that defense is 50% of the game. And let's be honest, no one wants to get in the gym by themselves and start doing defensive slides, which probably wouldn't be helpful anyway. But really trying to get stops in a one-on-one -on -one or two-on-two -two situation can be really good for your development. And even if your only option is to play against weaker competition, maybe your younger brother or sister, that is still better than spending three months straight over a summer just doing dribble moves against a cone. That isn't going to prepare you for your games where it really counts. What basketball training has always done for me is instill confidence in my game. I don't necessarily use everything that I'm working on in my training in every game that I play. In fact, I'll be honest with you, there are some skills that I've worked on in the summer or off season that I've literally never used in a game. But that's totally fine because what training those skills does is it gives you peace of mind. You know you have put in the work, so when the game starts, you feel more prepared and confident. I think this is especially true with shooting, well, at least for me. I always feel better with my shot if I have been focusing on getting extra shots up consistently. I will also say that when I was in high school, I would sometimes spend three hours straight in the gym training my skills. On paper, this sounds great because that's three hours getting better, right? Well, unfortunately, I think when I was younger, because my workouts weren't as focused as they are now, I didn't get as much out of them. If I'm being honest, I probably could have squished that three hour workout into about an hour and a half and gotten the same results. So make sure the time you spend in the gym is focused on what you actually need to do to get better. And of course, put yourself in as many live situations as possible. The truth is I see way too many younger players who work so, so hard and yet they can't seem to make an impact in their games. It's not translating to better outputs on the court over time. So I hope this video showed you a few ways that you can take your basketball training to the next level have patience and keep putting in the work but just make sure it's the right kind of work and if you want to learn more about what i think younger basketball players struggle with watch this video on the number one mistake younger basketball players make as always thanks for watching let me know what your workouts look like and what you might want to see in a future video